How exactly would we define an oscillation? So let's suppose that we have a solid object with some mass that is attached to a spring that moves back and forth along a horizontal frictional surface. Such an object moving in such a motion is called an oscillating object. So the object motion back and forth is known as its oscillation. So, let's suppose we have the following diagram. We have a box with some mass attached to our coil spring, which is attached to a wall. So, let's suppose we choose our equilibrium point to be point A. So, what exactly is an equilibrium point? Well, an equilibrium point is essentially a point at which the force created by the spring acting on the object is zero. So our displacement at point A is zero. So if we look at Hooke's law, which states that the force created by the spring acting on the object is equal to negative K, our spring stiffness constant, multiplied by our displacement, at point A, our displacement is chosen to be zero, so that means that the force acting on our object at point A must be zero. Now let's suppose I take my object and I compress my object and compress my spring so that my box lies at point C. Now at point C, there's a force that acts on the object due to the spring and this force points in the opposite direction of its displacement and that's why Hooke's Law has this negative sign. This negative sign simply implies that the force acting on the object by the spring points in the opposite direction of displacement as displacement. So if we displace our box, our spring in a negative direction along the x-axis, the force created by the spring acting on the box points in the positive direction. So that's why this force is called a restoring force. This force restores our box back to its initial position, back to its equilibrium position. So once again, at point C, the force created by the spring acting on the box points in this direction. Likewise, when we stretch our spring, what happens is the box is displaced and therefore the spring is displaced a positive distance along the x-axis. So that means the restoring force created by the spring acting on the box points in the negative direction along our x-axis. Now, let's suppose I compress my spring to point C and I let go. Well, if the surface is frictionless, the object will oscillate back and forth forever. Now, let's suppose it begins at point C, so I let go of the object at point C. The object will travel to point A, then to point B, back to point A, and back to point C, its initial position where it began. So, this full oscillation is known as one cycle. And the period is simply how many cycles seconds it takes for our object to complete one full cycle, in other words, go from point C to point A to point B, back to point A, and finally back to point C. Now, let's discuss the complete cycle of the following box. Let's suppose that the horizontal frictionless axis is the x-axis, and we begin at a position of negative x from our equilibrium point, which is chosen to be zero. So this is zero meters, x meters, and the object begins at negative x meters. So we let go of the object, and at point i, so at point one, there is a restoring force that is created by the spring that acts on the box and pushes the box in the positive direction, in the opposite direction of displacement. So, at position one, we compress the spring a distance negative x. The negative simply means we compress it in the negative direction along the x-axis. So, the spring exerts a force on the mass according to Hooke's law, accelerating that object, that mass, in the positive direction. So, because we have a net force acting on the box, we will have an acceleration. 
But notice because the force is not uniform, it's not constant, the acceleration is also not constant as the object moves along this direction. So the maximum acceleration is achieved at this point where the force is maximum. And the force is maximum at point one because our displacement is maximum. So let's go to position number two. So the object has inertia, so it passes the equilibrium point. What that basically means is, as the object begins traveling to position 2 and it finally reaches the equilibrium position, that object is said to have inertia. And so that inertia will carry that object past the equilibrium point. But note that at the equilibrium point, at x equals 0 meters, the spring does not exert a force on the mass. So that's why we did not draw this red arrow. So at position two, the displacement is zero, so the force is also zero. And that means at this point, the object is not accelerating, its acceleration is zero. But the mass reaches a maximum velocity at this position at x equals zero. So let's go to position three. As the object travels from our x equals zero to the positive x, the spring creates a force that points in the opposite direction and that restoring force created by the spring slows our object down. And when the object reaches a displacement of positive x from, uh, from our equilibrium position, the object has a velocity of zero. The object momentarily stops and it accelerates in the opposite direction. So it goes back to our position two and finally back to our position one as shown in position four and position five. So whenever we discuss oscillation of such an object, we have to talk about a few quantities, a few physical quantities. So displacement, frequency, and amplitude. What exactly is an object displacement? Well, displacement is simply the distance from the equilibrium position. So our displacement from the equilibrium position to this point is simply negative x, and displacement from this point to this point is simply positive x. What about frequency? Well, the frequency is simply the number of cycles, the number of full oscillations an object could make in one second. So the units are cycles per second. And notice the period is defined as simply the opposite of frequency. It's the number of seconds it takes our object to make one full cycle. Now, what about the amplitude of our oscillation? The amplitude is simply the maximum or greatest displacement from the equilibrium position. In this case, our amplitude is simply x. It's x in this direction and it's x in the opposite direction. So if x was 5 meters, our amplitude would be 5 meters.